Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Jen. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two soon to be three as you can tell <laughs> um, by my belly and today's video is just going through I don't remember if this was like a week or two weeks long. I just filmed a little bit here and there of things that we were doing around the house to get ready for baby. One of the first things I did obviously was make sure that everything was washed. You always want to make sure that their clothing is washed, their bedding, um, any like swings or bouncers or seats, boppy pillows, nursing pillows, anything that you have, uh, you want to be washing those fabrics to prepare them for your little babe. So I'm just going ahead this day. I really was just working on that. There really wasn't a whole lot, just his clothes and some pillow covers things of that nature. So I went ahead and got all of those ready, got those all washed and dried. forget I already forget what the brand is it's like the snuggle me or like a dock a tot I don't, I don't know all the different names for them um, but basically kind of like a co-sleeping sort of a situation thing I never had one of these with either of my two girls uh, so this will be the first time that I'm trying something like this but I'm looking forward to trying it out I'm still not sure what we're going to do as far as the sleeping arrangement, if I'm going to have him in this on the bed with me, or if I'm going to go ahead and just try and put him down in the crib. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure because our youngest kiddo right now, she, I don't know, she's been in this phase lately, the past just a couple months really where she wakes up in the middle of the night and then she goes from the room that she shares with her sister into our room and gets in bed with me and just yeah so I'm not sure what the sleeping arrangement is going to be this time around just going to kind of wait and see I might try both options see what works best see how we all get the best sleep uh, I'm a pretty light sleeper anyway. I have insomnia, so I have a hard time getting to sleep, uh, an even harder time staying asleep. <laughs> and so you add kids into the mix and it just, it's kind of a mess. Um, but yeah. And I feel like also just, you know, that period, basically that postpartum period, um, I don't know. I'm just not a heavy sleeper. So every little time that the baby moves, like I'm either already awake or it wakes me up. Um, I don't know. I just hear like the slightest little movements and it gets me up. And then it, like I said, it's hard for me to fall back asleep. So I just kind of lay there and wait to see if they need me to get them, nurse them, soothe them to sleep, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, the newborn stage, I mean, we all suffer with lack of sleep during that time anyway, but especially people like myself who are light sleepers to begin with, I feel like, yeah, it just complicates the situation, but it is what it is. The things we do for our babies, right? The sacrifices we make. So this day really, yeah, my focus just was on laundry, getting it done, washing all of, oh, I also washed all of like the baby carriers, the baby wraps, um, just give everything a good clean blankets all of that stuff and as you can see my youngest girly she's just always interested in whatever I'm doing she's my little helper she just loves to help always wants to help with stuff so it's really sweet and both my girls they're really excited for a new baby they're excited to meet their brother it's funny because every time I have a doctor's appointment I say oh I'm gonna go you know to the doctors and check on the baby and oh you're gonna get the baby you can get our baby brother out <laughs> uh, it's just I don't know it's really cute they're really excited and so really it could be any day now as I sit here I will be 39 weeks tomorrow so 
as I'm recording this voiceover. <laughs> it really could be any day. We'll see. Next up, I was going ahead and just getting, trying to figure out how I wanted to store stuff. So we live in a townhouse and it's two stories. So we have our downstairs, which is where we spend the majority of our day because our living room and our dining room kitchen are down there. And that's where we spend most of our time. And then upstairs is the bedrooms and the bathroom. And so we're really not up there a whole lot, to be honest. Uh, my kids don't really play in their room much. Um, most of their toys are stored in their closet and then whatever toys are in rotation are downstairs in our living room. So they don't play a whole lot up in their rooms. They do a little bit more so now that they're both a little older and they can go up there and play with like their dolls or their Barbies or they set up like a little tent camp out in their closet and <laughs> you know just do fun stuff. Um, but for the most part, we spend most of our days downstairs. So I knew that aside from like a changing sort of station set up in the bedroom for nighttime stuff and after bath changes and getting dressed, I knew that downstairs I was going to want supplies too. That way, every time I have to change a diaper or change him, I'm not having to go up and down the stairs. So I was trying to get things organized in a little like storage shelf that we have downstairs in our living room there's like one bin to that that I'm gonna have diapers and wipes and butt cream and the things and I'll, I do show that later in the video like how I finally ended up organizing it because let me tell you this took me way too long <laughs> I don't know if I was overthinking it I just tried a bunch of different things and it just took me way too long but in the end it got done and that's what matters <laughs> um and so I didn't record it, but all of his clothes are behind me on the bed, just folded. Uh, so I do get to putting those away as well. And this snuggle me thing, man, it, I don't know, it washed nice. It washed, it did really good in the washer and the dryer didn't get beat up or anything. But in order to clean it, there's like a little pad that's in the middle that you have to take out. And getting that sucker in and out was um, a workout. It was... <laughs> It was pretty tough, to be honest, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it, it means it's a good fit. It fits nice and snug in there, which is good. But yeah, you definitely saw me struggling a little bit there. <laughs> and so he really doesn't have too many clothes. But I will say this being my third pregnancy, my third time around, I know what I actually dress my babies in, at least for those first like few months. I mean, really, let's be honest, for the first like year, they pretty much live in sleepers, sleep in plays, bodysuits, onesies, trying to keep things more minimal this time around. But also, usually the first like three months, I like to have the most clothes for that age range because between diaper blowouts and possible like spit up if your baby has um, acid reflux, things of that nature, you can go through a lot of outfits a day. And it's totally dependent upon how often you want to do laundry. And yes, as a stay-at-home mom, if I had to do laundry daily, I could. However, I do not want to. <laughs> I don't want to have to do laundry every single day or he's not going to have clean clothes. That's just not a situation I want to put myself in. So I do like to have the most pieces of clothing for that zero to three month age range. Three to six, I still keep quite a few things as well. And then as they get older, they can have less pieces. But I was able to get everything for the first three months, like zero to three months. I cleaned out the majority of one of my top shelves in my dresser and that's where all of his clothes are. So I also will show you that. All right, and so far, a bunch of diapers, our um, diaper changing pad, like cover, that's an extra cover for it. This is a wipes warmer. I don't technically use it for warming the wipes. I will keep wipes in it once he's here, but mostly I use it as like a nightlight at nighttime for, <laughs> for diaper changes and things like that. Uh, just super easy, so. I do use that. I keep that up here. There's some stuff I still need to put away and figure out. But then up here I've got, so this is his like sleep, sleep sack thing. 
This is a burp cloth, um, a cloth diaper bag, baby carrier, and then his two like pacifier clips. One of those I am going to put in the car, but for now that works for storage there. And then coming into the drawer, this side is like my underwear and stuff. <laughs> um, he has a few like sleepers back here. These are three month, so those won't fit for a little bit. But then pretty much this is his wardrobe other than a few sleepers that we have downstairs. This is the boppy pillow. This is like a spare cover for it. But he's got some socks, some booties. Uh, these are his pants and then onesies that go with pants. And then these are like his sleepers, the footed pajamas. Um, some of them aren't, but most of them are footed. So this is pretty much like for the first few months of life, of life, this is his wardrobe. Also, I have started like setting aside stuff for the hospital bag. So I've got like a little blanket here that I'm going to use as a burp cloth. I've got his hat, um, little like booties and mitten set, a pair of socks and some outfits to wear. So far, that's really all I've set aside. But um, I will be sharing a video later on that's like everything I'm putting in my hospital bag. So that'll be included. But for now, I just started setting stuff aside. All right. So we have this little storage shelf in our living room. And I've gone back and forth and organized this quite a few times. But for now, this is going to be like the baby's basket <laughs> baby changing basket stuff for downstairs um the top is just like my girl's hair stuff the bottom one actually has i believe like lotions yep lotions wipes and cloth diaper bags but for now, for the baby, I've got some diaper rash cream, diapers, wipes, and then just some outfits so that I don't have to run upstairs if he needs an outfit change. So, yeah. And then coming over here, we have oh, this little basket down here. For now, I've just got two of the baby carriers in here. Um, I might just leave it like that. I don't know. I might end up adding some other things here and there, but for now that's how I'm going to keep it. And then I don't remember if this was the next day or a few nights after, I'm not sure, but I did go ahead and get one of these like rolly carts. Um, I bought mine from Michael's. I know you can get them from quite a few different stores, but Michael's had a really good sale going on and I knew I wanted the larger one. So I went ahead and grabbed that, got it for a great price. And I got, it's called, I think it's just called like a cart topper. So I'll show that at the end when I, um, when I'm done building the cart, but it's like this nice, it's fake wood, obviously, but you pop it on the top. Really, you could get three of them and have a top for all three of the shelves. But I knew that on that top shelf that I was going to want that flat surface because this cart is going to be stored in our living room like I said, which is where we spend the majority of our time. So I knew that I wanted something beside the couch that I could set a drink down on, a plate of food, or if I want to be sitting there keeping an eye on him or holding him, whatever, and I want my computer in there, I can have my computer on there. I just wanted that option. Plus, it gave me another thing to store, like, breast pump supplies on, burp cloths, a couple blankets for him, a couple of, like, just our throw blankets also is what I end up putting in the bottom shelf, which I don't think I shared. I don't think I shared the final result of like how I have the cart organized in our living room. So maybe I'll show that in a different video, but yeah. So this is me just putting it together and two of my cats just being cats, doing what they do. This was pretty late at night. The girls had already, well, I guess not really late. <laughs> the girls had already gone to bed. Jeremy was laying down because he's got to wake up early for work. And I figured, oh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and get this done. And these things are really simple to put together. It didn't take me too long. And thus far, it like, it's nice. It's held up. It seems pretty sturdy. Yeah, I like it. It does have two 
wheels that are locking and two that aren't. So that's nice. So you can have it so that it doesn't roll around. It doesn't really move. Or if you want to bring it from room to room or whatever you're using it for, whatever you need it for, you can unlock the wheels and then lock them in place. I just thought that was a smart feature to have. And so I'll go ahead and show a little bit of like me starting to organize it, but I really was just trying to get an idea of how I wanted to have things set up. So this by any means is not the finished result of this rolly cart, like I said. Next up, Jeremy had helped me raise the crib mattress. Um, I didn't film it because one, I just was not feeling it that day and he doesn't love to be on camera anyway. Um, and I just wanted to get it done. Not worry about setting up the camera, not worrying about having to blur my kiddos out because I don't like having them on the videos, uh, privacy reasons. <laughs> yeah so we just we raised the crib mattress and then I went ahead and I was like putting his bed together I was putting the bed skirt back on putting his clean sheets on and then I also have this thing it's basically just like a wedge that goes under the mattress um, it does have a vibrating feature I don't use that but I like to use the wedge because it props the mattress up a tiny tiny bit and I've noticed that it does help with like acid reflux issues if your baby has those and I think it's just something I bought at Target or Walmart like years ago. exactly what you would call them. They're basically like crib rail covers. 
I believe they're 100% cotton. They're not very padded, but it's basically so that once your kiddo starts like teething, they're not just gnawing on the wooden bar. So I got these off of Amazon. I'll link them if I can find them in case you want to check them out. So I'm interested to see how they do. We don't have too many like gnaw marks from our kids. My second kiddo never really seemed to do it. My first did a little bit, but my second kiddo never really seemed to like chew at the crib railing. But nonetheless, I'm interested to try these out. It was kind of a pain in the butt to tie them all on, but uh, got it done. Gotta do what you gotta do. I did wash them beforehand. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and throw all of like the other accessories, basically. Boppy pillow, nursing pillows, that co-sleeper thing. Just going ahead and putting that all back in the crib. Just kind of storing everything in there. And after that, bedroom is ready for baby. We've got everything set up for him in there. Oh, and so the reason we actually bought this crib, it wasn't like just for the looks of it. It was for this drawer mainly because I knew that I could store like extra bed sheets blankets, things like that down there. And then back in 2020, when I had my second kiddo and had decided to try cloth diapering, this was great to have because I can just store all of the cloth diapers under there. It's It's been so, so nice. So if you find a crib that has a drawer under it, I say go for it. I definitely recommend it. And then the biggest task of this day, something I've been wanting to do for a while, and I'm kind of bummed because <laughs> I just... I should have waited until I really had the energy to do it because this evening I really just was not super in the mood to do it. Wasn't feeling very cutthroat if you ask me. But so I wanted to go through bins that I have of girls clothing that I've saved from my first kiddo and then the majority of it all we used with our second kiddo and I've just saved it knowing that we wanted more kids. This time around just happened to be a boy so I wanted to go ahead and pull out anything that was like really gender neutral that we could use for him and then also just declutter some stuff because there's just a lot of clothes. It's just a lot of clothes. I have four, it's like four or five bins and it's everything from newborn up to like age four in all of the bins and it's just a lot of bins to store in my kid's closet. I really wanted to get rid of more than I did because um, I just was not feeling like pulling every single item out and going through it. Just was losing steam, you know what I mean? So eventually I'll have to do this again, but I did get rid of like a bag full of stuff better than nothing. And I did find a good amount of items that we could use for our boy. So that's not bad. I found some socks. I found some onesies, I think that were newborn, some that were zero to three months and some that were three to six. Oh, and actually the one thing that I really was hoping to find, I couldn't remember if I'd gotten rid of it or not, was one of those like baby bunting zip up like outfits. Yeah. So I found that. I'm really happy that I did because this winter when we're outside playing with our girls in the snow I'll uh, have him all wrapped up in that and probably strapped to my chest in a baby carrier or baby wrap he'll be able to be nice and cozy so I was super happy to find that but yeah like I said I just was not feeling it this night so eventually I'm gonna have to do this again and hopefully get rid of more and then after that all that was really left to do was clean our diaper genie Go ahead and get that just cleaned up, disinfected, get it all set up and ready for some dirty diapers. And then we were going to be ready. Ready for baby.
My kids are downstairs watching a movie, so hopefully you can't hear it, but if you can, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, last thing really on the list, um, other than packing my hospital bag, which, like I've said, is going to be in a different video, I've got to clean the diaper genie and get it all set out. Oh, get it all set up. Oh my gosh. I have one cat who, these are the caps to like the beech nut fruit and veggie pouches. Or actually the breakfast ones. My kids like the ones with yogurt in them. Um, but I have one cat who's obsessed with the caps and it's Snowball. I find them all over the friggin' house. Usually they're stuck under the fridge or the oven or the couch or our hutch that's in our um, living room. But somehow he got one under here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but so I'm going to go ahead and clean this and discuss with you guys why oh i already hear a kid coming up here <clears throat> all right take two so i wanted to get this done but also talk to you guys um a little bit because i missed last week's upload i've been trying to upload every sunday um and i was finally consistent for probably like three weeks in a row yay um, it never lasts, but I, I'm already getting a hot flash. So as I was saying, I have no idea what that is. Oh gosh. Um, I was pretty consistent with my uploads for three or four weeks there. And then I planned to have this video out last Sunday. But alas, we, <laughs> I, okay, I wanted to include in the video, like switching the car seats around, getting um, the infant car seat and everything in the car. I thought, yeah, I'll put that in the video. That's part of like prepping for baby. Well, we had a Hyundai Santa Fe extra large, three rows of seats, love that car. The front two seats were heated. It drove well. I had it for a little over two years. Never had an issue with it. Only did like regular maintenance on it. Everything. That thing. My kid's in the room, so sorry if you hear her. You're going to hear her playing. Um, but that thing ran like a dream. Love it. Comfortable. Never had any issues with it. Was not ready to break up with that car whatsoever. However, when we went to change all the car seats, mind you, our oldest is going to be six in November. So she's forward facing, but she's not tall enough or weighs enough yet for a booster seat. And I don't, I'm glad because I don't want her in a booster seat yet. So she's forward facing in her car seat. Our younger daughter who turned three this summer is still rear facing but we planned on turning her to Ford facing during this whole switcheroo of the car seats. Please be careful. That's a really nice tripod. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we planned to switch her. Jeez. We planned to switch her to Ford facing and then have both of the girls in the very back row, have the boy in the second row but still be able to like get the seats down so that they can get in and out. I'm trying to avoid a minivan if at all possible because I just do not want to drive a minivan in Maine winters. Judge me if you will. Nothing against minivans in general, like I don't care, but in Maine winters, I sure as heck don't wanna be driving a minivan, okay? I just don't. So, I wanted to stick with the SUV route. Let me grab my drink. By the way, part of baby prep, I'm also doing like body prep. I'm eating my dates. I'm drinking red raspberry tea. I'm taking my vitamins every day, which you should just be doing anyway. <laughs> I've been taking a prenatal vitamin for like five years now, probably. And I take like extra vitamin D. You're supposed to anyway when you're breastfeeding. 
and then I've just stuck with it because I noticed like a significant improvement in my mood and just my overall general health when I'm taking extra vitamin D. So I do that too. Um, but I like to, I brew like a big batch of the red raspberry leaf tea. And then I put it in, I have like a half gallon jar or whatever. I put it in there, pop it in the fridge. And then as ice cubes, I have frozen, uh, frozen cherries. And I like to use those as ice cubes. Hey, 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 hey. You can't be doing that when I'm doing a video. That toy is way too loud. You're going to have to take that downstairs. Please and thank you. But, uh, yeah, so I've been drinking a hefty amount of this every day. And good news, um, I'm not dilated at all, but my cervix is nice and soft. <laughs> not that that's indication of a whole lot, but cool. But these are nice, um, these are nice, like, glass jars from Amazon. Yeah. If I can find them, I'll link them because I like them. For stuff like iced coffee, smoothies, any like ice drinks, I like it. But back to the car. Okay. So we move our girls' seats to the back and we realize, oh, okay, the back, the third row in our Hyundai doesn't have um, like the latch hooks. So we'll have to use the seatbelt path. Okay, haven't done that before, but we'll try it. We go and we do that. We install everything. I didn't realize it until the next day when I was going to do a grocery pickup order. I was going to get the girls in and I wanted to like triple, quadruple friggin' check that the seats were nice and tight back there. And I just didn't feel like they were super tight. We tightened them a lot, but I just did not feel like they were very tight. So then I pull out the manual for the car seats and I realize... Oh, when you are using the seatbelt path instead of the latch hooks, well, regardless, if they're forward facing, whether you use the seatbelt path or latch hooks that are in the seats, you have to use that top tether. Yeah, guess who uh, didn't have top tether like hooks in the third row of their car, SUV vehicle. Yeah, me, us. You guys, I, th I mean, this ju it's that kind of stuff that just literally will send me over the edge. I, I just, oh my God, I was out there for so long, just like rereading the manual. And I was like, yeah, th this just isn't, there's no way this is going to work. Um, and in the second row... We have technically what's called like overlapping seat belts. So there's literally no car seats that I know of or that I could find online that are safe to use in a second row that has overlapping car seats. It just, you don't want the only thing that's holding the seats in place to be the fact that they're so wedged against each other. <clears throat> I had a little bit of a breakdown, a little bit of a meltdown. <laughs> um, and then I'm, you know, kind of like just really stressed out honestly I wouldn't say totally freaking out but just upset and stressed out thinking well geez can we afford another car are we like financially in a position where we can get another car right now I'm not ready to break up with this car I love my SUV and yeah can we afford one that has what we need really the only negotiable was that like or the only, sorry, the only non-negotiable was that we had to have a third row of seats and it has to have the top tether hooks in there. And like the, the Hyundai Santa Fe, we had a 2016 and they didn't do it there. And the 2017 models, that third row of seats, one of the seats has a top tether. So it still would have been like, meh. Um... And then, so now I'm like, great. Uh, I think I was like, today's Saturday, tomorrow's Sunday, and I'll be 38 weeks. So I was like, 
almost 37 weeks pregnant and I'm like technically this baby could come at any time and we don't even have a vehicle where we can have all three of our kids in it and we don't have family up here we have nobody to like help us like how would you even come pick me up from the hospital you wouldn't be able to drive us home Jeremy you can't like we can't what what are we going to do <laughs> like my mind is in a frenzy I'm just trying not to freak out but I'm stressed out and mad at myself that it took me that I basically waited until that point to install the car seats and then realize oh we, we can't even have all three car seats in this car it's not safe I just oh man I'm so yeah not a good day but I went ahead and got online and looked at like both of the vehicles that we have we've gotten through the same used car dealership um and the same saleswoman and we love her and she's awesome and both of the vehicles that we've gotten through them have never given us any problems so i said well let's let's do this i said i'll go online i'll look see what they have for an inventory see if there's anything that has like one it has to have a third row of seats and two they have to have obviously those top tethering hooks in the back row so we can have both girls back there forward facing sure enough i found they they really only had like five suvs in stock that um had third row seats and they were all like new vehicles to them so some of them didn't even have pictures or anything yet um, there were like two that did and one of them didn't have the top tethers in the back and the only option that I saw that had pictures and I could like visually verify that not only was there a third row of seats but that third row had a top tether for both back seats was a 2022 Kia Sorento so I told Jeremy I said can you call them in the morning and talk to the woman that we usually deal with tell her the situation tell her the car that i saw online this is the one we're interested in looking at but if they have something else that's like a little cheaper even a little older but it has those top tether hooks in the back row of seats we're totally willing to look at that too this was just the only vehicle that i could like verify by searching their inventory online so sure enough Jeremy calls her in the morning. She calls me a couple hours later. Um, gets whatever info she needs from us. And like, bing, bang, boom, that day we got approved. They took our Hyundai. The trade-in value was pretty good. It was like almost $14,000. Um, which is good for trade-in value. Especially in a 2016. But the th like I said, the thing was in beautiful condition. I loved that Hyundai. Um... The only thing I'm kind of bummed about with the Kia Sorento is I haven't, as far as I can see, those front seats don't, they're not heated, which I only used it like a couple times really in the Hyundai anyway. Um, but if it was a day where like my back was really like hurting, I would turn that on for a little bit and it would help. <laughs> but now I don't have that luxury. But yeah, so last week we had to go and get a whole new vehicle which like I'm so thankful that one we were able to do that like financially we were able to do that um we had something that was available nearby we were able to get it all done in a day like that's amazing um and so everything got taken care of really quickly it just was like emotionally I am a planner because I like to mentally and emotionally prepare myself for things and for like change and that was a big change for me honestly that just kind of happened on a whim so I don't know so I wanted to have a video out last Sunday like I said but all of this happened like Friday and Saturday and then so Sunday I was kind of catching up with just like house stuff home stuff um and laundry and just you know all the stay-at-home mom things <laughs> so 
I just wasn't prioritizing editing. But alas, now we have a new vehicle that is safe for all of our kids to ride in. So like I said, extremely, extremely grateful. It is what it is. Um, and so I'm hoping to have this video. I have this video mostly like every day I've been filming a little bit and then I edit it that night. So it's mainly all together. But I do have to do a voiceover on a lot of it and add music and all the things. So I don't know. I'm hoping to have this out on Sunday, but if it's not out on Sunday, it's all right. It is what it is. But really, I'm doing good. This pregnancy has been harder than my previous pregnancies, I will say. I've had some different ailments that I've never had in pregnancy before. But overall, I'm doing good. Baby's doing really good. Baby's really healthy. Cheers to that. I'm just wondering when he's going to be here. Our first kiddo was a rarity and she actually came on her due date, which isn't super, I think it's like 5% or less of children are born on their actual due date. Cause it's really just a guesstimate and she was, and then our second kiddo <coughs> was five days late and probably would have been later, <laughs> but I got a membrane sweep at my last like appointment with her because I really did not want to be like medically induced um and that was the plan basically like if I didn't go into labor I think by 41 weeks then they were going to schedule an induction and I was 40 weeks and five days and I was like we need to do everything we can naturally to get this going so last ditch effort I did a membrane sweep at my appointment it was like 10 30 in the morning came home. I think we had lunch. We went for a walk, came back, started having sort of regular contractions. Um, went to the hospital that night at like 730 and I was almost eight centimeters and she was born at like 10, 16, I think that night. So doesn't work for everybody, but by gosh, it worked for me. So we'll see. Get how to put these in it's been so long I feel like it goes in here and then this pulls and go oh my gosh oh cool there we go um oh it shows you right on here Duh. a door yeah pull it up <clears throat> pop it. Oops, I keep wanting to do that. Pop this in. Oh, I get a sneeze. <laughs> Pull her down. Tie a nice knot. All right, cool. So that's ready. <clears throat> a little pile of trash over here. I think I'm going to put this over here, but I currently have my carpet shampooer. Just like my room is such a mess right now because there's just stuff sitting everywhere, but I still have this just sitting here all washed and ready to go. I just don't want it to take up room downstairs in our living room when we don't technically need it yet. But we don't have a basement, we don't have a garage, we, like, all of our closets are already pretty maxed out, so I don't have anywhere to put that right now. And then my carpet shampooer is back there, because I have, like, the hallway I want to shampoo. I might do this rug again. I did it when we got it. I might do it one more time, I'm not sure. Um... But basically where the carpet shampooer is, which is behind this, I think that's where I'm going to put the diaper genie. 
it's not super convenient because diaper changes are mostly going to be over here but there's just no space over there because my dresser is huge it's a full-size crib and it, it just I don't want to move this bench at the foot of my bed I don't want to move that over and have it not be centered because I'm particular like that but yeah so I think it'll go over here <clears throat> it'll work uh, yeah. Got backups there. Backup charcoal filters, backup bags. So I think for now, I'll just stick this back over here. But now she's nice and cleaned. She's ready to be used. I don't want to leave it right here, even though that's technically closer to where we'll do diaper changes. I don't know. I don't want to leave it right there. I kind of want it tucked away over there. So, yeah. I'll give you a quick little <clears throat> bump date. Okay. Hold on. Give you a quick little bump date. We are 37 weeks and 6 days because tomorrow I'll be 38 weeks. So, we are... Pretty huge. Pretty large and in charge. <laughs> so we'll see when baby decides to show up. It's always kind of strange because I feel like the last half of pregnancy really sneaks up on you. Whereas the first half it kind of like drags out. Because I don't find out my baby's genders until the anatomy scan at 20 weeks. So it's like you find out you're pregnant. I always find out really soon. And then you're just kind of like counting down the weeks basically until the 20 week anatomy scan. So you can one, make sure baby's doing good and two, find out what you're having if you like to, which we do. We like to know. Um, but then it always seems like from 20 weeks until the end, it just like flies by. So yeah, it's kind of crazy that we're already coming up on 38 weeks tomorrow. Jeesh. I mean, this baby really could be here anytime, so we'll see. Who knows? I plan to labor as long as I can at home. Um, I also don't want to push it too far. <laughs> it's, uh, um, I do have hospital births, and I'll talk about why in the following video when I am sharing like what I'm packing in my hospital bag. This will be my third time around doing a hospital birth. I know what I bring, what I actually use, what I actually want or need, what I don't need to bring. So I'll go over that and I'm going to talk about like what my birth plan is and why that's my birth plan. So yeah, but it does feel a bit crazy. We're already at 38 weeks. Yeah. I just can't wait to meet him. And for the girls to see him and just, yeah. And to just be holding him and not have him like kicking me in my hip bones and my ribs. And giving me heartburn. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, you guys. So I will catch you in the next one. As always, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.